the man who joined the company. Instead of criticizing him for being late today, his boss cheered and applauded him. His colleagues were moved to tears as they said he finally looked like a human being. It turns out that Ian has a serious cleanliness problem and he does everything according to a plan. He gets up at 6 a.m. every day, puts on his glasses and hood, starts to change his bed linen and covers, follows it up with an iron, and finally sprays it with disinfectant. He takes a shower at 6, 45 a.m. and dries the toilet with a hairdryer without leaving a single drop of soap. His clothes are arranged by date every day. At 8.30 he leaves the house on time and arrives at the junction just as the light turns green without missing a second. In eight years he has never been late for work and today he is so late that his boss is anxious to call the police. He asks Ian what's going on, but Ian won't tell him. It turns out that he has a crush on Lily, the cashier at the convenience store, who also suffers from a severe cleanliness problem. He talks to Lily every day afterwards and keeps a love diary of his encounters with her. After 100 days of observation, he decides that Lily is his soul mate. So he walked into the convenience store at noon the next day and took out his diary to confess his love to Lily. But before he could say the words he had been brewing for so long, the woman across from him looked up and startled him. Why wasn't it Lily? This is completely out of Ian's plan and he runs away in a dizzying panic. He ran back to the office but couldn't get into his work at all. All he could do was draw frantically on paper to stabilize himself until the evening when he realized his diary was missing. He rushed back to the convenience store, but it was empty. The lady at the door tells him the new clerk is at the bar. Ian rushes to the bar and finds the girl who wants her diary back. But the woman reads the diary and composes a divine song. She wants to borrow the diary again and Ian refuses. To his surprise, she says she's Lily's sister. The woman offers to help Ian court Lily and Ian agrees. He finally sees Lily again. He thought he could succeed by confessing his love. But what he didn't expect was that the girl hated it so much. She thinks it's a disease. She washes her hands until they peel and lives with an alarm clock every day. She's had enough of this life. And Ian's illness is even worse. This is definitely not the kind of boyfriend she wants. The more Lily talked, the more she broke down and made a mess on the table. Within seconds the two of them were in a state of discomfort and they immediately set things right. Then Lily told him that she was now in therapy and she suggested Ian go to the hospital too. And that's how Ian's first love ended before it even started. But he didn't give up and he decided to go to therapy in order to catch up with Lily. The man can barely hold back. His eyes are wide open. His mouth is wide open and he's shaking. But it's a cat that's got him into this mess. Ian is such a clean freak that he has to go to the laundromat to be disinfected after being held. But in order to catch up with Lily, he seeks treatment from a psychiatrist. Ian tells the story of his condition and drives the therapist crazy with his constant statements. As he was leaving, a strong man hugged him and it killed him. He shivers and runs to the laundry to disinfect himself. But if he stays like this he will never catch up with Lily. That's when he was approached by Lily's sister, who asked Ian to form a band with her for a talent contest. The songs for the competition are all adaptations of his diary. In return. The girl helps him with his therapy and his pursuit of Lily, and they strike up another partnership. The first thing she does is take away his watch, he can't keep track of time anymore, and tells him to go to bed and turn off all his alarms. As a result, he is late the next day. From this day onwards, Ian's life is in complete chaos. Soon the band had their first rehearsal, but Ian had to polish the piano ten times over, and yet his playing was first class. The girl was so surprised that she hugged him and Ian broke away frantically. He rushed to the laundromat to have his whole body disinfected. In the evening he planned to scrub the toilet at home. But the girl wrote a song that she wanted Ian to hear. He had to rush to the barbecue. He was supposed to wash the toilet and go to bed at this point. But his plans were shattered straight away. After a drink, the girl reveals what's on her mind. The judge for this competition was her ex-boyfriend who already had a family but the girl had been cheated on. She signed up for the competition to get back at her ex-boyfriend. She wrote this song to ridicule him in public. On the day of the competition, the scumbag judge got angry when he heard the song and he scored it as a fail. Luckily, the other two judges scored the song fairly and they were able to pass the competition. Back at the convenience store. The scumbag came to confront the women and threatened them not to enter the next round of the competition. He also said that the women were not good singers and should not be embarrassed on stage again. The girl fought back her tears. Ian can't take it anymore. He stands in front of the girl and says strongly that we'll be there. The scumbag walks off in a huff. The girl is sobbing on Ian's shoulder and he doesn't walk away this time as he has a serious cleanliness problem. Is this the cure for a severe clean freak? At this point Ian confesses for the second time and the girl kisses him straight away.
To his surprise he faints on the spot with his severe cleanliness problem. It's the end of the world when someone hugs him, let alone being kissed. In his perception, anyone who is not sterilized is a carrier of the virus. It was the second round of the girls' competition and they walked on stage, but before they could start their performance, they were called off. The scumbag started to accuse the girl of being a third party. He also revealed Ian's past in public calling him a fraud with an IQ of 200. It turns out that Ian was a genius as a child and his teachers thought he would be a great success, but now he is a librarian. Ian was instantly furious. He rushed forward to hit the scumbag, and the two men were pulled apart. Ian's heart was opened and he ran home and hid. He sits alone on the sofa as if he can't see any hope in his life. Suddenly the doorbell rings and the girl brings two bottles of wine. As they drink and talk, the girl said she'd found the scumbag and smashed him with her guitar. Seeing the sad girl brings a smile to Ian's lips. Ian comes across a kitten, which he cautiously walks up to and strokes. He suddenly felt that the world wasn't as bad as he thought it was. That day, the hospital held a presentation where everyone spoke their minds. When Ian stood on stage, this time he didn't want to run away. He told his story in public. Ian had been bright since he was a child and his mother wanted to send him to America for further studies. But at only eight years old, he didn't want to leave his mother. So he deliberately chose the wrong answer in his final performance. The audience instantly started to scold him. When confronted by the media, his mother fell down the stairs and died in an accident. From that day onwards, he followed his mother's habits. He was afraid that if he made the slightest change, his mother would never come back. He leaned on the doctor's shoulder as if he was back in her arms. He kept apologizing, but his mother blamed herself for everything. So, it's my <laughs> Ian finally let go of the shadow of his heart and started to touch the world. On the way home it suddenly rained heavily and this time he didn't choose to run away but stood in front of the girl and ran through the rain together. In fact, we all have pains buried in our hearts. And those who are a bit weird in life are just trying to protect themselves. They are all the same as us, living in their own way in this world, ordinary and hardworking.